Good morning, everyone. This morning, I'm going to do a short video um, to talk about secondary guarding and entrapment with mobile elevating work platforms. And I'll be using a JLG 860SJ today and also a Genie S85 to demonstrate this for you today. So what is secondary guarding and what is entrapment in relation to mobile elevating work platforms? So there's two main ways entrapment can occur. The first way is when the operator of the boom lift or the scissor lift is not watching in the direction of travel. So in other words, if they're moving backwards, they're not watching backwards, they're watching in the forwards direction, and that means they can collide with something and that can crush them or trap them against the cage structure or the basket structure. The second most common way entrapment can occur is when they're elevated in the air and the ground surface maybe is not even or there's a drop off, a wheel goes into that depression and then the basket structure moves uh, quite severely and that can trap them against some structure in the building, for example. They're the two most common ways this entrapment situation can occur. So how can we avoid this hazard? Um, the most important way to avoid the hazard and for safe use of mobile elevating work platforms generally um, is to ensure we have competent operators, competent users of the mobile elevating work platforms. And that means structured training, like the IPAF PALCARD training course. And in the PALCARD course, the instructors actually focus in on uh, vigilance and continuous observation for the operators to watch the direction of travel. Okay, so this is drilled into them and it's a very important part of the IPAF PALCARD training. And then another important thing we need to do is we also need to walk the route. So we need to make sure the ground surface is even and there's no drop-offs or potholes. Um, and if there are, that's okay, as long as the MUP's designed to be using that surface, but we have to bring awareness to them. For example, safety cones can bring awareness to those. So when the operator is in the air, potentially driving at height, they can see these hazards and these depressions in the air. And we also need to make sure that we have an emergency and rescue plan in place. That's a key aspect of um, this uh, entrapment situation. An emergency rescue plan is required any time we're using a mobile elevating work platform. And what that does is many things, but it allows us to respond very quickly and get a person down in an emergency should it take place. So we need to understand how this entrapment situation occurs, this entrapment incident. And generally, how entrapment occurs is when operators in the boom lift or scissor lift basket or platform, and they're not watching in the direction of travel. So for example, they could be driving or booming backwards like this, and then they should be actually watching backwards regularly to see where, what they're gonna impact with or what the hazards are there. But sometimes they forget or they haven't had the required training and instruction, and that means they can collide with something on the back of the neck or their back, and that can push them against the structure of the cage or the basket, and they can be trapped against it. And maybe they can't breathe or not have internal injuries of some description. So that's how it can occur. The second most common way entrapment can occur is if an operator is driving the MUP, okay, and there's rough ground and they haven't done their um, site uh, walk the route check, and that means one wheel could go in a, a depression while they're in the air, and that could suddenly move the basket or platform, and this can then thrust them against the structure like a beam uh, in the roof you can see here, or one of the fire sprinkler pipes, or even a, a structure like the roller door if it's open, and that can also cause them to become trapped between that structure and the boom cage. And then again, maybe they can't breathe there um, or they have some type of internal injuries. So that's how this entrapment situation commonly can occur. So with the JLG secondary guarding, this particular design, what actually happens is if I'm not watching where I'm going and I'm moving in that direction and then I hit an object in my back or the back of my neck and I'm pushed against this structure, Okay, that's when I'll be trapped. But what happens with this is this depression bar stops the functions of the boom lift and in some instances it'll actually reverse the function to a degree and a horn will sound or an alarm will go off and that's the important part of this or one of the important parts because with, with the incidents we've had we need to make sure we have quick response and often when people are at height we're not aware that they've had a, an issue so the, the alarm going off is important for bringing awareness that something has gone wrong at height to people on the ground so they can put the emergency rescue plan in place. So with the Genie, it's very similar to the JLG second regarding I just showed you. In this case, they call it a contact alarm. So what happens again here, if I'm not watching where I'm going and I hit a structure on my back of my neck or my head or my back and I'm pushed against the cage structure here, I will break this cable and that gives me wiggle room. 
So it allows me to, if I'm injured, I'll fall to the platform, but at least I can have first aid come to me quickly. Okay, so it'll also stop functions uh, on the boom lift and an alarm will go off and the lights will flash here and that brings awareness to people on the ground again that something's wrong in the air and then they can implement the emergency and rescue plan. So now I'm going to give you an example where an operator is uh, not watching in the direction of travel as they should be um, and maybe they've forgotten or they haven't had the required training and instruction and they've made a mistake and then they can impact with the roof or the ceiling. So let's see what could happen then. I'm moving towards the roof, I forgot and then I hit the bar here. You can hear now the alarm sounding and the boom's functions have ceased. And they'll also reverse. You saw the boom come down a little bit there. So that's how this system works. So I'm de I'll demonstrate now again another scenario where the operator is not watching the direction of travel. They could be driving in the reverse direction, but watching in the forwards direction, or they could be booming out in the reverse direction, watching the forwards direction. In other words, they're not watching where they're going. And this is a situation where the second regarding is going to help us here. Let's have a look at this. So I'm now booming out towards this structure, not watching, I've impacted, and then I'll hit. Now you can see there that the second regarding has stopped the function and also reversed it. This gives them that wiggle room where they can um, be rescued or probably fall to the floor of the basket or platform, uh, and then the emergency and rescue plan can be deployed. So I'll just demonstrate a couple of examples now of how an operator, uh, if they make a mistake, or maybe they haven't had the required training and instruction, uh, what can happen to cause entrapment. So one, first one, I'm going to head towards the roof. So I move in the up direction, and I'm not watching where I'm going, and then my head hits the roof, and what will happen is I'll get pushed against the bar here, the wire, and you can see how the alarm sounds, the flashing lights are going there, and what that's doing, I'll just reset that. That's bringing that important awareness to people on the ground so they now can affect the emergency and rescue plan. Okay, I'll give you one example, another example rather, of how this can happen by booming outwards or driving and not watching where I'm going. Another example is the operator is telescoping out like I am now, not watching where they're going like this, and then they come into contact with that pipe, and again, they're going to be crushed against the structure, and this is entrapment. Now we have wiggle room. Because I've broken that bar, what that allows me to do is I will fall to the platform, and the emergency and rescue plan can, can be affected then. So with the newer second regarding systems that use ultrasonic sensors, um, electromagnetic sensors and radar, they actually um, are a preventative method. So they actually stop the operator coming into contact with a structure. So obviously prevention is better than cure, so they bring an advantage. And they also do other things like they reduce the speed of the equipment when it's coming into close proximity with a structure. And sirens will sound at a frequency that gives the operator more awareness. So second regarding, is an important part of the solution, but it's not a solution in itself. So how do we achieve that? We visit one of our Manlift IPAP training centres and we ensure that the operators go through the accredited training course to give them the confidence they need to be aware of all the things they need to know to avoid this particular situation.